What's up, Wolverine fans? Jack here, another episode of The Big and Bold, and it's time. It's finally arrived, the last game of the season, the game. Ohio State at Michigan. You got the number two ranked team in the country in Ohio State, fifth ranked team in the country in the Michigan Wolverines. This is the third time that Jim Harbaugh has led Michigan into the final game of the season with one loss on their record. We saw it in 2016, and we saw it in 2018. Michigan lost both of those games, but there are some important distinctions that I want to talk about that could lead to this game having a different outcome than before when Michigan has played Ohio State with the shot at a Big Ten title and with a shot at the playoff on the line. Of course, you had the JT Barrett game in 2016. You had the blowout in 2018. Here we are again, you know, maybe third time's a charm. We'll see if Michigan can get it done against what is essentially the best passing offense in all of college football. And at the very least, Ohio State is the best wide receiving core in all of college football. So I'm gonna talk about how stylistically these two teams match up, keys to victory for the Wolverines and partially Ohio State as well. We're gonna look at what their season has told us thus far about these teams. And we're gonna use all that to try and formulate, you know, a bit of a, a prediction for how this game is gonna go, the final score for the game. So without further ado, you know, we can look at how both of these teams have done thus far in the year. They're both 10 and one, have, times have had, you know, sort of their shining moment. Obviously, Ohio State's best win just occurred. It was beating seventh ranked Michigan State 56 to seven. And believe it or not, it really didn't even feel like it was that close. They absolutely destroyed Michigan State. And it looks like Ohio State is really in sort of their ultimate form when at the beginning of the season, their defense was struggling their offensive approach with C.J. Stroud wasn't perfect. They didn't know what they had in Travion Henderson yet at running back. So Ohio State is really in full swing right now. And their worst loss and their only loss on this season was at home against Oregon, 35-28. Offensively, it took a while for Ohio State to get going. But the big storyline there was their defense, that their defense was playing terrible football. They gave up 31 points to Minnesota. And if Minnesota doesn't lose their starting running back, Minnesota could have even put on more points. They struggled against Tulsa the week after the Oregon game. You know, we really couldn't put our finger on what Ohio State was. And then they play a competitive game with Penn State at home, mind you. Play a competitive game with Nebraska, 26-17, to win that game. But they really put any doubt away by absolutely decimating Michigan State. Now, conversely, you look at the Wolverines' season thus far, and there's a couple interesting things to look at. You know, you can look at some of the teams that both Ohio State and Michigan have played. Nebraska, Michigan State, Penn State, Rutgers, Maryland. They both dominated Maryland. Ohio State dominated Rutgers 52-13. Michigan, of course, had that early season struggle against Rutgers 20-13. I would say Michigan did a better job handling Nebraska as well. You know, Ohio State walked away 26-17 on the road at Nebraska. Michigan offensively put up a lot of points, but they also gave up a lot of points in the second half. And that's something I really want to make note of, is that you look at the second half against Michigan State as well. Michigan definitely outplayed MSU in the first half and got grossly outplayed in the second. Plus, you had some questionable calls by the officiating crew, but Ohio State dominated Michigan State. So... Does any of this mean that we can base solely our opinion on who's going to win this game based on who they've played already? No. Just because Ohio State dominated Michigan State and Michigan State beat Michigan doesn't mean Ohio State will beat Michigan. And just because I think Michigan played a little better game against Penn State and Nebraska than I think Ohio State did doesn't mean, obviously, that Michigan will beat Ohio State. But it does lend itself a little bit into the conversation of how we think these teams are going to win and the strategies they're going to employ. So it helps us kind of come to that assessment that we're going to make. Now, let's look at these two teams from a stylistic standpoint because they win in very different ways. Ohio State has a run game that they can lean on. You know, Trayvon Henderson is a phenomenal running back. They use more of that one guy system at running back because they tend to throw the ball. They throw the ball a lot. And that's obvious. They've got the best wide receiving core in college football. I mean, we thought Chris Olave was a stud, and then Garrett Wilson breaks out. And if it's not him, 
Ned Smith and Jigba. They, they have just this incredible wide receiving core that's three deep. I mean, Ohio State has many five-star wide receivers as Michigan does five stars on their roster. So you can look at any game and break it down. C.C. Stroud is able to just hit wide open guys because Ryan Day is this crazy offensive play caller and because they have incredible wide receivers with speed, size, and great route running ability. So that's how Ohio State really wants to beat you, is, is through the air. But if they want, they can rely on Travion Henderson to keep a defense honest. And that's really what scares me. And I'll talk about it a little bit more when I look at my keys to victory for the Wolverines. But we talk a lot about C.J. Stroud because he's a Heisman candidate. But Travion Henderson is a thousand yard rusher. He has 14 touchdowns on the ground. And time and time again, we've seen Michigan get destroyed on the ground by Ohio State. Whether it's Ezekiel Elliott, Carlos Hyde, take your pick. We've seen a lot of OSU running backs run on Michigan lately. So Ohio State doesn't just have to win with the passing game. They can do it on the ground as well. And stylistically, that's how I think they're going to try to beat the Wolverines, is through the air and try to hurt them early. Because Michigan's not built to come back from a point deficit. And as we saw with Ohio State against MSU, they don't care if they're up 30, they wanna be up 40. That was what got Michigan against Michigan State, was playing conservative, thinking that they had a sizable enough lead to ride out that point deficit Michigan State had to come back from. So you have a very offensive reliant team in the form of Ohio State, but question is, you know, has their defense figured it out? Obviously Michigan has the defensive advantage here. And when you look at the Wolverines, we know how they like to win. They want to control time of possession and run out the clock. They want to take long drives and then surprise you with explosive plays down the field. We saw that against Maryland. They did it a couple times against Penn State that ultimately won them the game. They even did it against Michigan State. I think they just needed to do it more often than they did. But Cade McNamara has been a really efficient passer. He doesn't have the gaudy 30 plus, 3,000 and a half passing yards that CJ Stroud has. But what he does have is a 14 to two touchdown to interception ratio. He doesn't get sacked very often. And he almost keeps defenses honest with the passing game for the run game is essentially how Michigan has constructed their offense. Versus Ohio State that wants to use the run game to keep a defense honest for the pass. They want to run the ball and they want to run it a lot. And they're going to do it with the Sun Haskins and Blake Corum. That much we know. And that's how they're going to try to win, I think. And that's how I'm going to get into my first key to victory for the Wolverines. Is run the clock out. Take a long time to score. But the second part of this key to victory is cap off those long drives with touchdowns. I mean, in my mind, ideally... You would take 10 minutes to get down the field first drive with the offense and cap it with a touchdown. It's not so much how long Ohio State has the football offensively, but it's how often do they have the ball offensively. That to me is what's really gonna matter. I think if you're allowing Ohio State to touch the football too many times on offense, you're gonna put yourself into a box where you're not able to score as often as they are. I don't doubt that the defense can get stops on the Buckeye offense, but how many are they going to give you and, and how often are you going to benefit from drives that your defense does kill for Ohio State? So that to me is my first key to victory is they need to obviously run the football. That's what everybody knows. You need to run the football. You need to run it effectively. Because at the end of this game, we very well may look and Michigan could have a 10 minute advantage in time of possession and still lose by double digit points. But that's where they need to not only control time of possession with the run, but capitalize by scoring touchdowns when they get in the red zone. That's been a real problem for them. That's why Michigan was at almost the top in the country for field goals scored in all of college football because they get down the field, run, run, pass, run, run, pass. And then it becomes a condensed field and they play the same conservative football in the red zone and they're not scoring touchdowns. You know, that's why you have double digit rushing touchdowns for Son Haskins and Blake Corum, and Cade McNamara's only sitting at 14 after 11 games. So that's kind of my, my two for one there, key to victory, 
is control time of possession, run the ball out, but capitalize with touchdowns. We saw them settle for field goals against Michigan State, and it bit them. You know, they felt like they could play that style of football, that conservative offensive approach, and kick field goals and maintain and get a lead. And they did get a lead offensively by 16 points, but they thought they could maintain that lead, and that's where they were wrong. That's something you can't do against Ohio State either because if you, you get a 16 point lead on Ohio State they can get that back in three minutes and we've seen that before so that's really my first key to victory second key to victory and it somewhat contradicts my first but drawing in the defense with the run you know if Ohio State's putting seven or eight defenders in the box and you've drawn their defense in let Cade stretch the field with his arm get passes down the field and I know what you're thinking I just said long methodical thought out drives and yes I, I do want to see that from them and I think they win this game by doing that but I think that the way they're going to stretch that lead out past say 14 points into the 24 27 point range is by striking the defense over the top with the speed they have at wide receiver you know Cornelius Johnson and Dalen Baldwin have sneaky speed they're quicker than fast, I guess you could say. But Mike Sainer is still a quick player out of the slot. Andrell Anthony, as a freshman, has wheels. Roman Wilson is one of their fastest wide receivers they have. They need to use those guys and stretch the field in order to, I think, really hurt the Ohio State defense and take some air out of them. You know what I mean? You're going to be pummeling them all game with the run. In the second half, I really want to see play action hurt them over the top, and demoralize that defense. That's what I think Michigan's going to need to do to win the game. And now, of course, my third key to victory for the Wolverines. And this is probably the most obvious that I think everyone is aware of, is get to the quarterback. That much we know. When you have two defenders with 10 sacks on the season, David Ajabo and Aiden Hutchinson, that's clearly the strength of their defense. So play aggressive up front and soft in the back. And what I mean by that is, if you're sending four or five defenders after the quarterback on every play, it's Aaron Hutchinson, David Ajabo, Mozzie Smith, Christopher Hinton, you know, you're sending those guys in, mixing in blitz packages with Josh Ross or Daxon Hill. You're sending four or five defenders at CJ Stroud. In the back end, you're playing soft coverage with six guys. Because all you're trying to do is soften the blow of that Ohio State passing game. And all you need, might need is an interception. You know, one turnover, two turnovers in the game. And next thing you know, you're trying to build a lead. That's what Michigan's got to do. They have to build that lead. They can't play from behind because that's not how they win. Now, we've seen them in a couple examples fight adversity this season. You know, when they were down on the scoreboard at Penn State, for example. But with Ohio State, they're just going to keep scoring. And that's how we've seen these huge leads be built up in the second half by Ohio State. Saw it in 2018 and 2019 against that Don Brown defense. It was Don Brown was the king of not adjusting his defensive scheme, and they just got outplayed in the second half. And it happened every time. I don't think Mike McDonald, Michigan's defensive coordinator, will allow that to happen. But Michigan's strength is not in their secondary, truth be told, and certainly not at the cornerback position. So when you're facing the best wide receiving core in college football, they have to play very soft zone. They're going to give up some plays. They're going to give up some yards, but contain the big plays and let Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo, let those blitz packages get to the quarterback and force mistakes. You know, if he's not allowed to stand in the pocket and find his open receivers, we're going to really see what CJ Stroud is as a quarterback. Can he put those passes on a tightrope and hit his wide receivers? where he needs to. I think that some of the more micro things Michigan needs is for the officiating to crew to give Michigan a little bit of love, for one thing. They're going to need to let the secondary play a little aggressive with those receivers. You know, they're going to have to maybe let the Michigan offensive line play a little nasty to make sure that they prevent the Ohio State defense from having a good game. I think they're going to need some things like that in a similar vein to where you know, Michigan State got some love from the officiating crew when Michigan and Michigan State played. On top of that, I think Michigan's going to need some turnovers because they're not able to score enough points to keep up with the Ohio State offense, even on a good day. 
So they're going to need turnovers to help lead that along. And, you know, will they be able to get those turnovers? Time will tell. I mean, Trayvon Henderson doesn't have a fumble on this season. CJ Stroud only has five interceptions on the season. But they're going to have to create a turnover or two and capitalize on those. Time and time again, you know, we've seen teams of lesser talent than an opponent stay in a competitive game. And what ends up losing them the game is not always mistakes themselves, but a failure to capitalize on mistakes by the other team. That's what Michigan's going to have to utilize, you know, is if you get that interception on CJ Stroud, if Ohio State gets a bad penalty, drives them back into a fourth and long situation, and you get a short punt and you have good field position. Things like that are what Michigan's going to have to capitalize on. I'm not so much worried about Michigan being a mistake-ridden team because they haven't been all year. It's an inability to capitalize on mistakes by the better team, which is definitely Ohio State. But at the end of the day, that's how I think Michigan wins this game. I don't know if they will. I would call my score prediction 31-37 Ohio State. I think it's going to be close because I think it's realistic to assume that Michigan can have a couple hundred yards and a couple scores on the ground. They can get a couple hundred yards and a couple touchdowns from Cade McNamara. And you can probably rely on Jake Money Moody to hit a field goal or two in the game as well. So that's how I get to my relative score of 31-ish points for the Wolverines. As for Ohio State, I would not doubt that Stroud's going to have a 300-yard, four-touchdown game. And Trayvon Henderson will probably have 100 yards and a, a touchdown himself. Of course, it's only speculation. That's my stat prediction for the game. That's how I think it's going to go down. But time will tell, right? The game's got to be played. So we'll see. I thought Michigan was going to do it in 2016. Thought they were going to do it in 2018. Didn't happen. I even tricked myself into thinking they could win it in 2019. But this is probably the biggest game of Harbaugh's career. I think he knows that. I think the biggest road game of his career was at Michigan State. Blew that opportunity. Here we are in the big factor in this game that separates it from the past. And this is kind of my final notes for the game. Something I want to leave you Michigan fans off with as a sort of sign of hope that they can actually win this game is that this is most certainly the best run game and best pass rush Harbaugh has had since he got to Michigan. And that's without a doubt. Now, maybe they're not as strong through the air as I'd like, but truth be told, when you look at their passing game, all they're really lacking is a couple big games against crappy opponents through the air. That's really, I think, all they're lacking from, say, the Shea Patterson era. So the passing game, not as bad as you might think in comparison to what Michigan has had in, in their passing game. But best pass rush, best run game Michigan's had under Jim Harbaugh. And in, in 2016 and 2018, when Michigan walked into that last game of the season as a one-loss team, they were walking to Columbus, Ohio. This game is being played in the big house in Ann Arbor, Michigan. That matters a lot. It's going to be 110,000 people raving, waiting to see another win over Ohio State, something that we haven't seen in 10 years. And the expectation turns into, you're in the last game of the season, a one loss team, you win this game, you go play for a Big Ten title. And whether it's Ohio State or Michigan, they're going to be the favorite to win a Big Ten title. And you win a Big Ten title and you make the playoff. That was the spot they were in in 2016. That's the spot they were in in 2018. Here they are again, 2021, looking to win a Big Ten title for Michigan. That's really my breakdown of the game, you guys. Let me know in the comments whether you agree, disagree, what your score prediction is. Could it be a blowout? Absolutely. Could it be a low scoring game and, and really surprise us? Absolutely. Because you have no idea what you're gonna get out of a game like this. But at the end of the day, it's not so bad for Michigan if they end up playing for a Rose Bowl. It's not. But playing for a Rose Bowl is a big deal. We haven't seen that in a long time. Depending on the outcome of this game, I will be giving you guys a breakdown of their upcoming game. Of course, hopefully that's breaking down Big Ten title aspirations, but in all likelihood, we're gonna be looking at what the Rose Bowl is gonna be, whether it's Michigan, Oregon, Michigan, Utah. That's gonna be a fantastic game in California if that's what happens. But thank you for listening, everybody. This has been a good breakdown. I have hope. I, I would love to watch Michigan win. I don't know if I truly believe it, but the point of the video was I wanted to show you how I think they can win. But thank you everybody again, and go blue, beat Ohio.